Financial with David Lazarus. You only got away with that because there was a guy wearing a chef's hat. That's exactly how I That's got away. Totally with it. got away with it. <laughs> Good to see you again, David. Um, how high do gas prices have to go before the demand starts to fall? I feel like in LA we haven't gotten there yet because the traffic's still crazy. We, we're not there yet now here and apparently we're not there nationwide either. Look here's some context. Right now oil is trading at around $120 a barrel and here in LA the average for a tank for a gallon of gas is around $6.39 uh, a gallon give or take. All right, That's where we are right now. Goldman Sachs economists crunched the numbers and they determined that oil prices, again, 120 a barrel right now, oil prices are probably going to go up to $140 a barrel between July and September. And the northward trajectory is probably going to continue all the way up to about $160 a barrel before demand starts to reduce and prices start to come down. All right, so if at $120 a barrel, we're at over $6 a gallon here in LA, you can figure that if we get up to $140 or even $160 a barrel, we're looking at $8 a gallon almost assured. Now that's not locked in, obviously. Anything can happen, but with COVID, with the war in Ukraine, with all of these issues going on in energy markets, it looks like there's going to be upward pressure on prices going forward, at least for the near term, certainly during the summer driving season, and that's going to keep pushing prices up higher at the pump. You don't really can't expect a lot of respite for that, and that's why in the last segment, in the 11 o'clock hour, we talked about how the World Bank now says a recession is probable. This is one of the key reasons. Is that $8 nationally or locally? That would be locally. Very okay. much locally, right? Very much locally. Uh, I think on a national basis, you'd be looking at five, six. Mm -hmm. But even then, I mean, yeah, which is still it's unbelievable. Remar it's remarkable. Yeah. yeah. All right, trick of the trade. The way we, we do this affordably, we shop at Ross Dress for Less, right? We're big fans. Best of place Ross to get your shirts and ties, but now we can go to some of these bigger retailers, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah, and I totally get this. I'm not immune to it either. Marshall's also a good one. Keep Marshall's that in mind. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> not trying to give plugs here. I'm just saying. Right. If you're, Nordstrom you're, Rack, too. Let's talk about all of them. <laughs> if you're moving from print into broadcast and you got to get a wardrobe going, <laughs> right. I'm just saying. <laughs> in any case, Target took a beating today. It warned that it's got all the wrong stuff on the shelves. It's still has things planned out for a pandemic. In other words, active wear, sweatpants, fleece. On the other hand, people are starting to go back to the office. They're looking for back to work clothes. Target says it needs to get this stuff off the shelves and it's going to be discounting and discounting heavily. That's great news for consumers, but obviously tough for the company and tough for shareholders. Target stock down a little more than 2% today. And it's not just Target. According to the Wall Street Journal, The Gap, Macy's, Kohl's, a lot of the big retailers have have too much merch on hand. They've got too much inventory. They've got to move it. That means big discounts coming. So even beyond Ross Dress for Less and Marshalls, mm -hmm. you can probably do pretty well at most of the major big name, especially big box retailers coming up. Be looking for a lot of discounts because these guys got to get stuff off the shelves before the back to school sales start. So you should expect in coming weeks, if not in the next couple of months, a lot of deals out there. Look carefully. Sounds good. David, thank you so much. Good to see you, David. Thank you.